And I actually mentioned um, the fact that the Thames Valley had a problem with hospital provision. I based that opinion on the fact that I'd had 50, uh, about 50,000 patients that I'd seen as a GP and as a junior doctor in this area. Um, I've worked in the GP in about 50 GP practices in the Thames Valley region. I've worked at St Mark's and Out of Hours, I've worked in Slough, I've worked at Wexham Park, I've worked in Out of Hours at Heatherwood, I've uh, worked at Out of Hours in Wickham, I've worked as a junior doctor at Stoke Mandeville, um, I've referred patients in to the Royal Barks, to the John Radcliffe, etc, etc, etc. I also was born about three or four miles away in what was the uh, the Canadian Red Hospital up at Taplow in Cliveden, uh, a hospital which I might add is not there anymore. Um, and my family are all in South Bucks and in the surrounding area. And uh, I went to school in Marlow. And I, 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 I sort of, you know, I came to the conclusion that actually there was a, there was a need for a sort of strategic vision, some sort of rethink for the area, because it had long been the case, particularly in Bracknell but I hear just from Theresa that it's also in Maidenhead that Wexham Park has never been viewed as a particularly ideal location for a significant proportion of the population to get to. Uh, the reason it's in Wexham Park, and I will just mention some legacy here, is because the farmer's daughter was looked after very well at Upton Hospital, and, they, and the farmer gave a piece of land to the local community and they built a hospital on it. The fact that it wasn't at the epicentre of the population it was supposed to serve didn't seem to cross anybody's mind, but that's why we ended up with a hospital where it was. The reason we have a hospital in Heatherwood is because the Astor family bequeathed some land to the community. <coughs> Neither Heatherwood nor Wexham, or indeed St Mark's in Maidenhead, are on major trunk roads. This is a challenge, the challenge being that you cannot provide acute and emergency care to the necessary population size of six to 700,000 people from any of those sites. It doesn't make any sense. Have you tried getting to Wexham Park? Can you envisage having a hospital here of the size that I've envisaged in this project? Of course not. You can't do it on the St Mark site. You most certainly can't do it on the Heatherwood site. And ultimately, if you're going to be serving that number of people, you need to have it in an area which is accessible to the most people. So that brings me to where, why did I try to decide for Junction 8-9? Well, Junction 8-9 Actually, Theresa, forgive me, you were not the first person to say it. The first, the first organisation to suggest it was actually Deloitte. Uh, Deloitte were commissioned by the then Health Authority uh, in 1989. They were paid significantly more money than either my researcher or I were to produce this project. Forget, um, and I, they came to the conclusion, remarkably, that Junction 89 was the right location to serve East Berkshire. This was at a time where district general hospitals were still the way forward. Unfortunately, district general hospitals are going to be history. Right? They're not going to exist in the future. And the reason they're not going to exist in the future is because, as I've already said, we need regional hospitals serving larger populations. Now, there are lots of clinical drivers, medical reasons for why you would want to go down that path which is why what I've suggested has been supported by the Royal College of Surgeons, the Royal College of Physicians, the Royal College of Paediatricians, the King's Fund, which is the major health think tank in London. It's because healthcare has changed. The most of healthcare is chronic, which is not acute. Chronic care is offered in community hospitals, in GP surgeries, and increasingly in the future, it will be offered in your homes. So as a consequence of that, more money is being spent in those areas. A greater proportion of the National Health Service spending is in the community. It isn't on hospitals. But in order for us to provide the level of care that can be provided in the 21st century, we also need hospitals to be properly equipped and properly staffed. It is not possible to provide the very best care in all specialities with the number of hospitals that we currently have in this country. It isn't possible. Which is why, and I will cite this example because I've already said this in a public meeting in Marlow, my father, who sat at the front here, had his AAA, his abdominal aortic aneurysm, treated at Imperial College in London. He was diagnosed at Wexham Park. The operation that he received is not available in the Thames Valley. Now, I'm sure that's not the only one that's not available in the Thames Valley. 
That isn't a slight on the physicians and surgeons of the Thames Valley. It is because specialities are becoming more specialised. We don't have 24-hour angio suites and 24-hour stroke units, though I gather this is now changing since I've reproduced this project, that the Royal Berkshire has developed a stroke unit. But there are a number of services which, considering how affluent this area is, which don't exist in the hospitals that we have. We cannot expect to have them existing with the hospitals that we have because they serve two small populations and their sites and the number of the services and the facilities they have, you just can't do it. And so um, we're left with this situation when there's an inevitability to this. There's an inevitability to us having fewer acute hospitals and more community provision, be it via community hospitals, GP practices, or in the home. So that being the case, I think people in this area, in this region, and it has to be bigger than my constituency, I've got some sort of abuse for saying, well, how come you're not calling for this to be in Bracknell? It can't be in Bracknell in the same way that it can't just be, it has to be in a location that just serves a larger community. And so I've arrived at this, 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 this decision, this uh, proposal, with, with a view to actually Improving care. Now you will be here, and I, before anybody says I, I recognise that I've had to take this region in isolation. I fully recognise that Frimley Park is down here, that Stoke Mandeville is up here, that Hillingdon Hospital is over here, and the Royal Berkshire Hospital is over here, and that there is a health economy in play. I fully understand all of that. I actually think that the locations should be being decided by the Department of Health. Um, and the NHS should be deciding where these locations are. Unfortunately, that work isn't being done and hasn't been done as Theresa alluded to at the start. So I had to take a sort of decision on which area was I going to sort of pinch off and try to deal with. Well, this is down here. In fact, the, the, the sort of line goes through the half, the, the, this sort of bit go down to Frimley. So part of my constituency goes down to Frimley. But as you can see, Wexham Park is sort of in the top northeastern corner of the population that seeks to serve. And I chose 8-9 as a consequence literally that it was in the middle. I did that before Deloitte, and, uh, before I even knew that you'd spoken about it as well, Theresa. Now it turns out that there is actually a plot of land there of the appropriate size, a similar sort of size plot of land mm. to the Norwich Hospital that was built in the last decade, um, similar size hospital. It's the same sort of piece of land. And in fact that piece of land has has been considered um, for a variety of different developments, I gather, in recent years. And, it, and there is, as well as just the hospital, I know the football club are going to be moved out one point, this sort of thing. And it is in a very good location. Now, I'm not sort of obsessed with the location of this. And the, the, the final thing I want to say, because I'd rather you ask me the question, is that having produced this project, it, it actually is. is, is come to, to light actually that it could be that Heather and Wexham could merge with Royal Barks, not with South Bucks, so the Wickham situation. Um, I gather this is because, um, and bless the NHS, it has conflicting agencies. One agency is pushing Bucks in one direction towards foundation status and the other one is trying to stop it doing it. So then, therefore, merging <coughs> with another trust is causing complications. I don't really want to get into that. I guess what I'm trying to say to you is, is that there is going to be a consolidation of acute sites at some point mm. in Berkshire. And whether it's Junction 8, 9, or whether it's Junction 10, or, or whatever it is, it is going to happen, is what I strongly believe. So if it is going to happen, I would rather that people were informed about it so that it wasn't done in a piecemeal, panicky way, that actually people understood the reasons as to why it was happening. You will note that I've not been at all party political about this. As far as I'm concerned, this is above party politics. This would happen under a Labour government or a Conservative government. Um, I think that if we can secure this, if we can build this hospital, then everybody in this room will be better off. And indeed, the great majority of people in this area will have a better level of service. It's difficult to conceive of. It's a significant change. It requires significant investment. 
And in order to secure a proportion or, or indeed all of that investment, it involves the sale of cherished old hospitals of the past, which is all in the project, Heatherwood, St Mark's, Wexham <coughs> Park, sold off completely, a retention at Upton of a service, a retention in Bracknell, at what is the, currently the Royal Berkshire, have got a um, sort of Brant's Bridge site, which is not fully occupied because they can't afford to fully occupy their, that site at the moment, and a retention of a site in Wickham as well, all feeding into this hub. So there were going to be changes, there would have to be sales, there would have to be a lot of, uh, a lot of change. I, have no, I don't deny that for one second. But at the end of it, we would have a hospital that could provide all of the necessary care in the acute and emergency surgical sector, and we could have community hospitals providing outpatient appointments in all specialities, um, physio, um, OT, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All of those things that do not require acute cover. All of this could happen. I think it's a viable project, and I think it's a project actually that's the best solution for the, for the region. I now invite you to ask me some questions. Um, I think that I can t could talk to you. I was going to, and I brought it with me, I was going to read out my speech in the German debate, but I thought, no, I won't actually, because I, there are some, uh, some figures from the King's Fund, from the Foundation Trust Network, etc., etc., some research, improvements in stroke results, stroke mortality from consolidation of services. There's plenty of evidence that this model is the best way forward. Plenty of clinical evidence. And if you want it, my staff can provide you with it. Um, all we need here is a bit of courage, I guess, to, to go for it, and also the vision as well. Um, and at the end of it, we could secure an outstanding hospital that will serve us, and I suspect our children and our grandchildren. Thank you very much. Now somebody will roam around with a microphone if you want to ask, ask some questions. They did the front. Okay. Um, Sue Mackey, I'm the um, Hollyport Ward Parish Councillor. Um, Hollyport bounded, boundary is pretty much on Junction 8 and 9. Yeah, sure. um, I looked on your website as to precisely where the hospital's planned, and there's a big X right in the middle of the motorway. It's the plot of land that's bounded by the, A, um, the A308, the M4 and the Hollyport Road. Right, so it's where the little bit green, little green shows. Right, green okay. Shows. Um, because that is also floodplain, it is green belt. Yep. The infrastructure around that way is horrendous. Um, if you get on the motorway to get to a hospital, there's no way you can go, you're stuck on the motorway. Um, the same on the A road. You say it's hard for us to get to Wexham. Mm -hmm. You're now saying that the people, Langley Slough, have got to do the reverse route and get to us. Um, in answer, Jalvey and Sippenham will get to Junction 8 9 quicker than they'll get to Wexham. But the question is with regards to Wexham and Langley, they can get to Hillingdon much quicker than any of my constituents from Bracknell Town can get to Wexham. Yeah. But what Bracknell about Green Bell and floodplain? The floodplain, I'm, I'm not a surveyor, I'm not a builder, I'm not a developer. Uh, Green Bell, um, it's Greenbelt. I mean, I, I don't know what to say to that. I mean, I'm not here to advocate this plan saying, right, here we go, press the button, build it. This piece of land has been spoken about in the past. It has been earmarked in the past. Um, if somebody can come up with a better piece of land, which has the necessary infrastructure that you seem to be referring to, I'm all ears. Um, I had to decide where it should go. Otherwise, I, the plan would look stupid. I can't just talk about something without actually saying it has to have a location. Okay, but have you physically tried to drive around that area between half seven and yeah. nine o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Mad madam, I've lived in the area for Yeah, you've lived in Marlow, Bracknell, but that no, particular no, no, no. spot I live, I live is dire. I live at Temple. Yeah. I live in Bisson. Yeah, but that's still not Junction 8 9. Horrendous. Surgery. I've worked at the Hollyport Surgery quite a yeah. lot and commuted there okay. eight o'clock, nine o'clock, four pm, five pm, six pm. Trust me, madam, I know the area. Um, the, the piece of land itself actually has some, already some compulsory, I don't know what the term is, compulsory sort of highways agency delineation on it. 
Um, I've been shown the, the, the documentation, and it's implying that they're envisaging the possibility of doing, I think at Junction 8 9, what they've done at Handy Cross on the A40. Um, have, have you dismissed the traffic problem altogether then? No, but I'm you asking. Appear, you appear to have done that. No, 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 sir, I'm asking you to make a suggestion as to where it should go then. No, no, I haven't, well, I, I haven't considered it. You've been considering it for several years, obviously. No, no I've never, I've not spent any, ten, any more time than on a map going, right, where's the epicentre of the population? It's what I've done here. If, if, if you draw a map, sir, forgive me, but I think the blue dot is in the centre of that green there. So if you notice, I've just put the blue dot. The piece of land came to my knowledge after I decided that, the, <coughs> that it should be at Junction 8 9 because I was contacted by the agent for the land. Well, it's been that, talked that about for several of years, hasn't it? The talking about happens to be higher than the piece of land she's talking about floodplain. Exactly. It, it's never flooded there because it runs down into, it run down into the motorway. So I can't see yeah. how it can be classed as floodplain. And as for the roads around there, it's far quicker for me to get to Heatherwood than it is for me to get to Wexham Park. And mm -hmm. I live north of the A4. Yes, yes, I'm sure. So, I, <coughs> and, I, and I think, and I, as I said, I don't want to get stuck on the specific details of the piece of land um, because, as I've already said, it is totally dependent upon two acute trusts deciding, right, we will merge. And I have suggested, because I was aware that Heatherwood and Wexham of a woeful financial situation, um, and I looked at it, I thought this was the right location for East Berkshire, it then turned out, well, okay, well, why don't I involve Wickham, because Wickham was having its services downgraded, something which has also been incremental, and there were people here from the Save the Wickham Hospital campaign here tonight, and I went to them and said, look, you know, what do you think of this? Because obviously there is a road from Junction 89 straight up to High Wycombe, where there is a significant population who feel that they don't want to travel along that road to Risborough, from Ris through Risborough up to Aylesbury. The point is, sir, is that it's the age-old problem of everybody wants the hospital close by, but they don't want it anywhere that might upset them. Or it's, 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 there's this constant challenge when you come to infrastructure: is where is an appropriate location for a hospital? I mean, I, I, for me, it has to be on a motorway because of the nature of the fact that you've got a lot of people trying to get to it. And, and if, it, if the motorway gets blocked, you have a hard shoulder. If an A road gets blocked, you don't. Well, that's not true. That's not true. Sorry, what's not true about that? The hard shoulder. They're often being used. To, you don't have a hard well, shoulder yeah, but, everywhere. Sir, sir, sorry if I'm sounding frustrated, but if you get stuck on the way to Heatherwood on the Hollyport Road, why, where's the extra road? Where's the well, hard so shoulder? Again, if you get stuck on the Every hospital in this area is set, situated on a single carriageway. So? Though in which case, I would, I would suggest a three-lane carriageway with a, with a hard shoulder has got less likelihood of being blocked than a single carriageway with no hard shoulder. Some motorways, they, they don't have, they, they're using the, as you know, the uh, Ministry of Transport is uh, using hard shoulders in some cases right. for normal traffic. Okay, so I think we, we're not going to agree, we're, so I'll move on to the, to the gentleman right at the back who's got his hands up. Uh, 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 thank you very much. Um, my name is Derek Sorry. Wilson. Um, and um, from the particular site location that you've come up with, yes. I mean, from a strategic point of view, mm. it's probably the best site that mm. you could possibly identify. Yes, yeah, yeah. um, Simply because of its close links to the M4, close links to the M40, and good connection links to the M25. I mean, to be honest with you, that is the ideal location. Mm. So you've obviously done a great deal of research in identifying that piece of land mm. and been able to ascertain that from that location, if you were to draw a circumference and, and a, a mm. radius around it, it picks up all these individual mm. hospitals. Mm. As a result of this public consultation tonight, yeah. what is the next step? I mean, obviously you're going to be consulting till about Easter, and then what's going to happen as a result of that after? Sure, thank you. Um, as Theresa says, this is very early on in the, in the process. Essentially, the next step is to get local support and local commissioning groups 
driving this. To a certain extent, sir, I think the financial realities of the books of acute trusts in the area are going to drive the need towards um, consolidation. If I, if I could just, if you bear with me, I will just quote um, some statistics about um, the pressures upon trusts in the area. And if you just forgive me as I... 143 foundation trusts. Monitor reported that 10 had a financial risk rating of one or two, uh, one being high, and that 11 were in breach of the terms of their authorization on financial grounds. 20 trusts have de de declared themselves unviable in their current form. The majority of these trusts have also indicated that they foresee the need to, re to reconfigure and to merge in the near future. Um, However much I, I think we do need local campaigning and commissioning groups <coughs> buying into this, the financial realities from on top, from the hospitals themselves, are going to drive this. It's certainly going to drive Heatherland and Wexham to be looking for partners in the future. The question is, is which way do they look and which way do they go? Um, but it is important that you have local support, that you have commissioning groups that are thinking, okay, we think this is a good idea. Now, the impression I have got from commissioning groups so far is that they are broadly supportive of the concept, but they always say, but where's the money going to come from? So there is this initial sort of support, but then there's a sort of a dose of reality from their point of view. That's difficult to overcome because it does involve, as I say, some quite difficult decisions with regards to the closure of cherished hospitals um, because they're no longer viable entities. So I think, and it's something, as a point I've made actually with the project all along, unless it sort of implemented its entirety, it won't get done because people, there will be resistance from different quarters.